Here we have some uh, Paxilis involutus. Can you come and get a nice close picture of these guys? So they're growing in a cluster and there's a few of them all scattered around here. So these are ectomycorrhizal species that are growing on the roots probably of, of this tree here, um, which is an oak. Uh, and these are called uh, Paxilis involutus because, I'll just get this little one here and pick it, you can see under here, you can see the edge of the of the cap rolls rolls under to the gills and so it's involuted, so that's where the name involutus comes from. Now you can see that the gills in this case are a kind of a dirty browny yellowy colour and one of the characteristics of this, it doesn't have an annulus like that Agrospe parasitica has and instead actually the, the gills come right down uh, onto, the, onto the stem and that feature is called decurrent. Most gills, or the gills of most mushrooms, meet at approximately where the stem hits the cap, but these ones come down, uh, down the stem. Uh, when they age, they become kind of funnel shaped and they can collect water as you might be able to see uh, with, the, with these ones here. Uh, and it's not particularly obvious what the colour of the spores is from these from looking at them, uh, but they are brown spored, which so gills eventually go brown and start to get mouldy. Alright, and now if we just go over here, in amongst these Pactolus involutus, and in fact, right beside it here, we have a completely different species. So this is Xerocomus uh, chrysenteron, uh, and so this is what we call um, a member of the Boletes, and these are pl the pored mushrooms. So if I pick this, um, you might be able to see it's in, it's in pretty bad shape, but, uh, but there's pores instead of gills that this mushroom has. Uh, you can recognise this mushroom by its ornately cracked surface as it ages, uh, and hopefully we're going to we'll get some better examples of bolets to look at later. Uh, but this is also ectomycorrhizal, and it illustrates the point that you can have different mushrooms that intergrow all together. Uh, and so this is pretty distinct, so you wouldn't mix these up. But I've found, for example, uh, deadly poisonous species uh, growing intermingled with very similar-looking species uh, in one place. Uh, so you have to be careful uh, what you look for. Uh, and so I think that's all I'll, I'll say about uh, these mushrooms, but these are two good examples of, um, of uh, ectomycorrhizal species. Oh, actually, there's one other point I wanted to make. So um, the New Zealand species may not actually be Paxilus involutus of this thing. Uh, it may be a slightly different species, but it's still related. But I call it Paxilus involutus because it allows me to tell a story about these. So these are both uh, considered a good edible and deadly poisonous. So how can it be a good edible and deadly poisonous? So this was widely eaten in Central and Eastern uh, Europe, uh, but people would die from eating it. Uh, and around the time of the Second World War, a famous mycologist actually died from eating it. It turns out that something in this mushroom triggers an autoimmune response, and that autoimmune response causes autoimmunity against your own blood, and that's bad. Uh, we don't know what it is that causes it, and the strange thing is um, it seems to only happen with people who have eaten this mushroom several times before. And we've got no idea about what it is that suddenly means you can go from being able to eat this with no effects to it killing you. Uh, but anyway, probably not a great idea to eat those ones. Okay, so this is a follow-up to um, the Paxillus involutus story. So. It turns out that Paxillus involutus is not present in New Zealand and it is not, there's not even really good evidence that it's an ectomycorrhizal species. Instead we seem to have two main species of Paxillus here, both of which are ectomycorrhizal species. Uh, Paxillus ammoniovarescens and Paxillus cuprinus. They are supposedly differ on hosts and so um, Paxillus ammoniovarescens, ammoniovarescens uh, is associated with oak trees. So this collection here was found growing with oak trees and the name ammonia varescens kind of literally means turning green with ammonia. So I'm going to drop a spot of ammonia onto the cap and the flesh of these mushrooms and what we're looking for is a brief flash of green uh, that will then disappear. So I don't know if this will occur but let's have a go. Oh, 
Oops, see that one may be enjoying that, that one, try that one again. Well that may possibly be the response, so it went a little bit, I'm not sure if I'd call it green, but certainly kind of uh, greenish grey I suppose.